In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use serpa.dev to find local businesses and then find decision makers at those local businesses and then offer them your services. So in this example, I'm going to show you step by step a workflow that we've built for an outsourcing company. And if you run an outsourcing company and you're watching this video, using serpa.dev is an excellent way to find local business owners who are not on LinkedIn and are therefore not getting contacted as much as all the other ones that are on LinkedIn and therefore they pop up in searches like in Apollo or Zoom Info or even in Clay. People that are not on LinkedIn are getting a lot less of it. And if you can find out who they are using tools like serpa.dev and Clay combined, then you're gonna have some really great results. So what you need to do to begin with is set up in Clay your serpa.dev API key. So you can see that you can search Google search, Google images, Google videos, Google places, Google maps, Google reviews. And when you use their API with clay, you can run searches for multiple locations in a very, very short amount of time for a very, very low cost. And in this video, we're going to show you exactly how to do that. So you can see on my screen here, we have the X dash API dash key. And here's my API key value. And then we have content type, content dash type, capital C, capital T, and lowercase application slash JSON. And then we have the data for the query, the query format. So this is what we need to get into Clay. So to begin with, you're gonna to go to Clay, you're gonna to go to settings in the top right corner below your name. And then you're gonna to go to connections on the left. And then you're going to search for, you're gonna click on add connection. And we're going to search for HTTP. We're going to choose HTTP API with headers. And we're going to give it a name. So serpa.dev connection. And then we're going to add two API request headers. So I'm going to add two values here. And the values that you're going to add are going to be your X API key. So you're going to put X dash API dash key. And you're going to paste in your value that came from Serpa. And then you're going to paste content type for the second key. And the value is going to be application slash JSON. So now that that's done, you can now set up this entire process in a clay workbook. So if I go over to my clay workbook and start on the first table, what we have here is the town slash city and then the state. You might be wondering how I got this list of towns, cities, and states. For this example, which is Australia, I just searched online and found this website called peter-johnson.com.au slash Australia places. And this guy, I think, is a software developer, and he's put together this data set of Australian places that have been extracted from OpenStreetMap, and the data can be downloaded here. So the data looks like this. You have city or town, state, latitude and longitude. The problem with this data set is that the states are missing for about half of them. So I'm going to have to use ChatGPT to generate the missing states for all of these towns. Luckily, we have latitude and longitude, so it should be OK. Um, that's going to take some time, though. But if you're focusing on another country, you can easily search around online and find great resources like lists, CSV files that you can download that contain all of the cities and states and towns in a country. And then basically you just upload that into Clay. So you just go import, import from CSV, browse the files, drop them in. That's going to populate this table with all of those towns, cities and states. And so in this first table, what we're doing is we're creating a JSON array. And the way that we're doing that is with a prompt. So we're using ChatGPT here. And we're saying, create a JSON array of this list. So we have here a list of types of businesses that we want to go after. It's very important that you select JSON schema here, generate from prompt, and it will generate the schema that's going to be used to create the JSON array. And then the output is going to look something like this. So you can see that for the keywords that are going to be fed into serpa.dev and therefore fed into Google, we have all of those search terms, search queries, right? 
like this. And then we have write to other table. So what we're doing here is we're writing the data from this table into the next table in this workbook. This next table is called all queries. And in this table, you can see that we have the keyword, the town or city and the state. And then the query is a combination of those. That is the query that we're going to feed into serpa.dev with the HTTP API. So in this column, I'm going to show you how to set this up. What you need to do is firstly, you need to make sure that you've selected the right HTTP API headers account. So I've selected my one here and then the method should be post and the endpoint should be HTTPS colon slash slash google.serpa.dev slash maps here. And then you're going to put this in the body. So open squiggly bracket, new line, and then basically exactly the same as this. And then the query is that column there. So you put forward slash to enter that. And that's what it's looking like in the body. From there, everything else is fine. So just to recap, choose your HTTP API headers account. Make sure the method is set to post. Enter this value for the endpoint and then put this exactly this in the body. And that's going to feed all of these queries one by one into serpa.dev. Serpa.dev is going to run that search in Google Maps. And then you can see if we click on any of these where it says 200, which means it's ran, you can see in this one, it has found one place. So in this one, we have 11 different places in this JSON array. You can see all the details here. And once that has run, we're writing to the next table in this workbook. So we have company name, town, city, SERPA scraping, scraping query. Sound like Jonathan Ross just now. We normalize the website. So this is a feature in Clay that doesn't cost you any credits and is free. So we normalize the domain. If the domain is missing, we use Clayagent to find the website. So that gets normalized. And then finally, we merge those domains. And then we have some qualifying steps on the domain. So I'm running three different formulas here. Formulas are great for very simple tasks because they don't cost any API usage and they don't cost any clay credits. So firstly, I'm asking, does the domain merge contain a dot or not? If it has no dot, return true. Because all qualified websites will have .com, .net, then we're also filtering out any websites that have .gov or .edu. And then we're making sure that none of these websites are unwanted sites like facebook.com, google.com, linkedin.com, um, myshopify.com, wix.com, and so on and so forth, because we need to use the domain to find email addresses later on in this process. And if we have wix.com, guess what? You're going to find a load of Wix employees. So we definitely don't want that. If any of these three boxes are checked, then we're going to say that it's an unqualified site. So we have a little formula for that. So from there, we're going to write the qualified websites companies to the find people table. In our find people table, we have company name, domain merged. Then we have a list of job titles. So you're going to need to change this depending on what industry you're going after and what decision makers you want to reach out to. We then have this prompt, which is to find people using Clayagent from the website. So it is finding people that match these job titles who are located in Australia and who are at this company with this and it's visiting this domain merged, this website to find that information. The problem is that it finds a lot of people who, who are just <clears throat> completely the wrong job title. It's sometimes finding other people with other similar titles who are probably not suitable or just completely different titles like executive assistant, coordinator. So we have a second prompt that says, analyze the people that are in the find people Clayagent column and return the people that have any of these titles, these job titles. And so we're narrowing it down here. We're removing all the irrelevant people that Clayagent found, and then we're writing them to the next table. So the next table is final people. 
we are firstly running through a ranking step. So what does this mean? Well, the first thing we're doing is we're looking up decision makers in the same company in this table. So we're using look up multiple rows in another table, but we're just telling it to look up multiple rows of people in this table that all have the same domain. And so you can see that these first four rows show that there are five people in this company and I don't want to reach out to that many people. Now, if it was higher than three decision makers, we then run this ranking prompt which is going to analyze the job titles of each person in the same company and tell us whether they fall into rank one, rank two, rank three, rank four. We get the ranking output and we have a formula again that says if the decision makers in the same company is equal to three or less, then return true. Or if the ranking output is equal to three or less, return true. So we were going to filter out all the people of lower ranks in the companies that have too many decision makers in this table. And for people whose rank is okay, we're then going to run them through this gauntlet of an email waterfall that basically we use kit, trykit.ai to find their email address. If kit doesn't find one, we're going to use Clagent and visit their website to find email addresses. Often those are going to be email addresses in the form of, you know, sales at info at hello at company.com. We're merging the results and then we're checking because Clagent's going to return a lot of results that are free email addresses like at gmail.com at yahoo.com. So we are checking any that are free, such as yahoo.com. And then if that's not checked, we're going to run dbounce to find, to validate email address. Dbounce will work to some extent, but then we're using Bounceband to verify if a catch-all email address is deliverable or not. And so you can see this example in the seventh row, Dbounce said it's not valid, but Bounceband came back and said it's actually deliverable. It's info at. And so we get this. And from there, we have an opening line used for personalizing your email and making it sound like you're reaching out to someone who you've done your research on. So is it right that your company provides this service for these people with these problems? And from there, we're just pushing them into our sending account, a cold email sequencer. Here we have 1,830 towns or cities. And then from all of the queries generated, because there are 31 types of queries for every single town. We have already 50,000 rows here, so that's a lot. And then for every one of those rows, we have multiple results because there are multiple clinics or companies in the same town of the same type of clinic. And so you can imagine the amount of leads that you're going to find from this is as absolutely astronomical. If you'd like to chat about having us set this up for you, then click on the link in the description and book a time to chat with me. Other than that, hope you have a great day and talk to you soon.